we're going to tell you a story here today. We're going to start with a story anyway. Um, something that uh, um, was passed on to me by uh, my, my, my grandmother. My name is uh, Darren Corbier, James Darren Corbier. I'm also, my, my Anishinaabe name is Wabe Makons, which is, which is the little white bear. And, and I am from the Bear Clan. And I am originally from Wiki, Wikwemakong, which is on Manitoulin Island. And I teach Ojibwe, Nishnabemwin, Native Studies and Aboriginal Beliefs over at White Pines High School. So if you guys are, are, are thinking about high school, which you probably are, I'd imagine, right? Next year, come to White Pines, okay? We'll look after you there, okay? We'll take good care of you guys, okay? Anyway, this story is, uh, is, is a creation story. There, there, are, there are many, many creation stories, right? There's not just one creation story. There are many, many creation stories, many different creation stories. And this is, this is one that I was told, like I said, when I was, when I was uh, much younger than you guys are now, by, by my, my grandmother. My grandmother was, um, she, was a, she was living in two worlds. She was both traditional, like a Nishnabe traditional woman, uh, but she was also very uh, um, um, faithful, I guess, to the Catholic faith because she had gone to a residential school when she was growing up. When she was your age, she would have been in a residential school. And, and that's, what they, that's what they would teach them about that, about that style of faith. So she was kind of in between those two worlds. But she would tell me these stories. And she would tell me these stories as, as, as I was growing up. I was raised by my grandparents in that extended family. Um, and so what I wanted to do is share this with you. This is, uh, this is a, a, a relatively short story. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's in a graphic, like a graphic novel series, like a comic. You guys read comic books? Yeah? OK. Yeah, so this is going to be like in a, in a comic book fashion. The, the, the artwork, the drawings are all mine, like the artwork back here. This is, this is all my artwork. And, and so you'll see the, some of those ideas or themes reflected in the, in the artwork as we tell the story. OK? You guys good with that? Yeah? All right. And if you have any questions after, we'll, you know, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask. OK? Anytime. OK? All right. You can change, flip the page. So this is us, right? We're, we're here right in the middle of these three great lakes, right? Three fires. We're, we're known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We have the, uh, in the Anishinaabe, there, there are several different tribes, I think 10 or 12, if I remember correctly. And among them, the, 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 the ones that form what they call the Three Fires Confederacy are the Odawa, the Ojibwe, and the, and the Bodeotomy, or the Potawatomi. And right here in Sault Ste. Marie, or Boating, or Bokting, whatever you want, whatever Anishinaabe name you want to apply to it. This, this used to be like one of the ancient capitals of, of, the, of the Anishinaabe nation because we're right in the middle, we're right in the middle of, of Anishinaabe territory, right? The, so this would have been one of, the, one of the big important places to gather and, and people would have been gathering here for who knows, thousands of years maybe, right? So this is a map that you can, you can sort of make out the Great Lakes um, in, in the area, and then all, all around us we, we talk about our, our neighbors, the, like the Nibising over in North Bay, or uh, down south in what is Michigan now, um, the Bodeotomy. That's where you'll find the Bodeotomy. And then from here north to, how many of you have been to Thunder Bay? Anybody been to Thunder Bay? Yeah? So when you drive over the lake, that's all, all that area there would, be, would have been inhabited. It still is inhabited by the Ojibwe and by the Ojibwe people from the Anishinaabe Nation. So a rough map. Some, some of these titles are, are made up just, just for fun because, because every, every good story starts with a map. Okay? So you can sort of put yourself in, in, in those locations. Okay, thank you. Next. Um, story starts with, with complete darkness, total darkness. Okay, nothing existed and not even light. And, 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 and what happened is that, is that somewhere, somewhere in the center of that darkness, in the middle of that darkness, there came a, just a little tiny spark, right? Just a little tiny spark, poof. And then from that spark, that spark evolved, okay? It evolved into an awareness, and then that awareness became the creator, all right? So that was the first, that was the first thing that ever existed was that little spark. I keep pointing to uh, my, my friend Peter over here. He's, he's switching the, 
switching the pages. <laughs> um, so this is, this is what, the, what the creator saw when she came into existence. She saw nothing, right? She was the only thing that existed at the time. And we can go to the next page, please. And um, so what she did was she sent out her thoughts, okay? All, all, the, all these thoughts, she sent out all these thoughts and they appeared as light, okay? So all these brain waves were, were going through the galaxy, okay? The galaxy didn't exist at the time, but all these brain waves were going out and, and they appeared as light. And so within a short time, poof, everything was lit up, okay? Just from creator sending out her thoughts. Now, one of the things that, uh, one of the things that she noticed is, is, that, is that none of her thoughts returned. Okay, uh, anybody know how, how a radar works? Any ideas, yeah? Okay, so when you, you send out these waves from, from the radar and it bounces off the, the object and it comes back to you and, and they measure the difference to check your speed, like if you're speeding or something, right? Well, creator sent out her thoughts and because nothing else existed, the, the thoughts just kept on going and going and going and going and going. Nothing ever returned, all right? So she decided that since nothing was going on, she was going to have a nap. So she had a nap. And while she was napping, she had a dream of creation and everything in creation. Okay. So the next day, the next day she gathered up her thoughts. She changed those thoughts to energy, to matter. And then she created the first four elements. Who can tell me what the four elements are in the Nishnabe way of thinking? There are four elements. Anybody know what those four elements are? Without reading? No volunteers? Everybody's shy. Go ahead. Yeah. Earth, air, fire, and water. Earth, air, fire, and water. Right. Good. So, earth, air, fire, and water. Okay. The, the four, four basic elements that, that, that make up the, the, the world. Now, when she first created these elements, they, they, they were, um, there's, an old, there's a chemistry term that you'll probably find out when you start taking chemistry in grade 11. It's called, it's called inert, which means that they don't react or they don't, they don't, they don't work with anybody else. Okay? They're, they're, they stay the same and they're, um, they, don't, they don't mix with other things. And so that's what these were, these four elements at first, they were inert. Okay? Next. And so what the, what the creator did, what the creator did is, is she took a little piece of her own spirit and, and she infused each of these elements, the earth, the air, the fire, and the water, with a little bit of her own spirit. And then, poof, these guys were alive. And the spirits of the four winds, they came into existence. And so we have Wabanung, spirit of the east, Jawanung, the south, Epongishmuk, okay, from the west, and then Giwedanon in the north. And each of these elements, Wabanon is of the earth, Jawanon is fire, Epongishmuk is air or wind, and then in the north you have Giwedanon, and that's where you'll find water. Okay, water sits in that direction. At first they didn't get along. Okay, the elements, these, these element, elemental beings, they were always fighting with each other. Okay, they couldn't get along. Okay, one of them, they, they, all, they all thought they were better than the other and they would fight with each other. Okay, so air would fight with water. Okay, earth would fight with, with uh, air. Everybody was just fighting with each other. And so the creator, after a while, was starting to get kind of upset. You know, like, hey, hey, you guys got to get along. You guys got to learn to get along. Okay, finally... She became really disappointed and, and, and told them, hey, smarten up, you guys. Okay? And then once, once they, they got their act together and they were, to work, and they were able to work together in a, in a good and kind way, that's what you ended up with, was, was the earth that we live on now, okay, the planet that we live on now, the, the water that we drink, the, 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 the land that you walk on, the air that you breathe, you know, those fires that keep you warm and cook your food. Okay? That's, that's what happened a long, long time ago. But, but they had to get along first. They had to be able to get along and work together. So, creator was pretty happy, right? Uh, at the end of the first day, 
at the end of the first day, and she gave those elements instructions. Okay, original, they're, they're called the original instructions. And those elements were told to provide for everything else that was to follow. Okay? Creator told them, provide for everything else to follow. So at the end of the first day, she was pretty happy. She slept, she rested. And while she rested, while she was sleeping, she, was, she dreamed. And she was dreaming again. And she was dreaming of a world that was filled with all these green things. Right? Okay? Okay? Next. And so what she did was, when she woke up on the morning of the second day, she, she had this, this beautiful, wonderful dream. And, and she thought, I'm going to build this thing. What I've, what I've seen. And she gathered up more of her thoughts. Okay? Went around gathering more of her thoughts. Remember, her thoughts were all, all over the place out there. So she gathered all her thoughts and, and she started to create all of, these, all of these different green things, all these different plants. All right? So when she created the plants on the second day, she placed them in what we call the second world. In, in the Anishinaabe way of thinking, there, there are four worlds that were created. The first world was the elements, and the second world was the plants. And each of them were given instructions. So the elements, what were the elements told to do? Do you guys remember? Hmm? Get along. Get along, yeah. They, they were told to get along, but they were also told to provide for everything else that was to follow. So the plants were also given instructions, the plant world. And the plant world was told to provide for healing and for growth. So healing, we got our medicines from the plant world, right? Food, you guys eat veggies? Yeah, okay. So we get most of our food, if not all of our food from, from the plant world, right? So moving on to the third day, the creator is really happy. All these plants, all these plants were, were created and, and on the second night she went to sleep and then she woke up or, or she dreamt on the second night and she dreamed about all these other different creatures. And in the morning when she got up, she gathered her thoughts again. She began to create all these, all these different animals and she placed them in the third world. Okay, so we have the first world, the world of elements, the second world, the world of plants, and then the, there's the third world, the world of the animals. And she told the animals, again, she gave instructions to the animals and she told the animals that they were to provide for teaching most of us, when, when maybe, maybe not so much today because we're always in the classroom, but, but most of us when we, were, when we were younger, we were probably outside playing all day, right? Did, did your parents ever kick you out of the house? Go play outside. Yeah, okay. That, that, that's important to do that because then you can make those connections with all, these other, all the other worlds that are about us. But most of our teaching comes from the animals. We watched what the animals eat it probably means that we can probably eat the same thing, right? So if a big bear comes in and eats a, eats a, bun eats a, a bunch of grubs, you might think it's gross, but if you're hungry, you can eat the grubs too. Probably survive, right? Anybody want grubs for lunch? No? No, he's in the mood for grubs today? All right. So, creator said, provide for growth and for teaching for all those to follow. All right, so many of us, have hunters in our families who go out and, and they hunt these animals and, and they take them in a, in, in a nice way. They try to be, be, be good about it. They offer tobacco in exchange for, for the lives of those animals and then every part of that animal is used. And, and, and we learn from our observations of the animals and, and that's where our teachings come from, right? You'll probably hear a lot more stories. I'm hoping in the next you know, few years, more Aboriginal, more Indigenous stories will be told to you in schools and things like that because they talk about the teachings of the animals and what, what they provide for us. So at the end of the third day, she, one of the things, one of the things that I forgot to mention in, in the other two pages is that, is that um, with every, in every world, every plant, every animal, creator took a little tiny piece of her own spirit and, and, and she added a little tiny spirit piece of her own spirit for every one of those animals and every one of those plants, okay? So that way, that way we're all connected, okay? Everything is connected. Everything is connected to each other. And, and we, we tend to 
we tend to lose the sight of that because we're we're in these boxes and 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 you know we tend to lose our, our connection to the earth and to the animals and to the plants and it's really important to maintain those connections moving on creator at the end of the third day creator rested and and she w she went to sleep and and while she was sleeping she had this dream and in this dream she saw a different creature one that looked a lot like her and and so what she did was when she woke up on the on the morning of the fourth day she created this this being okay this human being looked like her all right and she breathed life into her and this first person's name the first human being her name was Winona okay now when Winona, after Winona was created, the creator, the creator appeared as a divine light in the sky and, 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 and lowered Winona to the earth, okay? placed her on the earth gently, okay? very gently placed her upon the earth. Okay? And when Winona arrived, when humanity first arrived on, on the earth, the, the first part of the, 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 the body or, or your body that would have touched the earth would have been your feet, right? You would have landed, you would have landed or touched the earth feet first. So when, when we talk about life, the word for life in the, in Nishnabe, in the Nishnabe language is bimad zid, bimad zid, and it means walking gently or walking in a good way. Okay, so when, when people, I'm sure Mr. Nolan's probably asked you guys or taught you guys, anishna eji bimad zin, Right? Anishna Ejibamadzi. And most of us are lazy. We'll just say, hey, Anishna. You guys ever say that to each other? No? Come to White Pines. I'll, I'll teach you that next year. Anishna Ejibamadzi. How are you walking? Are you walking in a good way? It's always a reference to your feet. Bimad Zid. Zid is your foot. Okay? So that was one of the original instructions that the Creator gave to humans. Bimad Zid walk gently okay walk carefully on the earth and the other one the other instruction that was given to uh, humans was mana dendamuin anybody know what that word means mana dendamuin anybody remember the sacred teachings have you been given the sacred teachings at all no everybody sh oh good Good. Yes, respect. That's what it is. Respect. Respect means that you're going to look after things. You're going to take care of things. Right? And, that's, and those were our instructions. When, when humans first arrived here, we were told, walk gently and respect all other things. The, the plant world, the animal world, the, the, the world of the elements, those are all our older brothers. Okay? They are, we are all related, we're all connected, you remember, with, with, the, with, the, with the spirit the crea that the Creator gave to all of us? That means we're connected to all these other things okay? and, and that, that exist. So Winona, Winona was, uh, um, she would go around, she was the only person on, in the whole world, right? And she would go around and she would introduce herself to the plants, and the plants would, would, would talk back to her, and she would introduce herself to the animals, and the animals would talk back with her. So they would, they would carry on these conversations, and while she, was, while she was going around introducing herself and asking and talking to the plants and the animals and stuff, she realized that she was alone, right? There was, there was only her, of her species. There was, uh, you know, all the, all the animals had, had partners. There was a male and a female, or a girl and a boy half. All the plants, plants have male and female parts, right? You'll, you'll find out about that when you start taking science. Plants, plants have male and female parts, or they can be male or female, all right? Even birch trees, birch trees, believe it or not, are kind of be identified as male or female, which is pretty neat. I just found out about that a year ago. And so she, she was wondering why she was the only one like her. Right? And the whole world, the whole planet, imagine the whole planet, and you're the, you're, there's only one of you. Well, there is, but there's only one of your species. And you get pretty lonely after a while. And so that's what happened with Winona. She became kind of lonely. 
And so the creator decided that she was going to send Epungishmuk, okay, the spirit of the west wind. Okay. So Epungishmuk and Winona, they, they got together. They got together a few times. And in this case, what happened was that Winona became pregnant. Okay? And she had a set of twins. Now, the two boys, one was named Majiquis. Now, Majiquis, when, when, you translate to, when you translate that word to English, Majiquis means the firstborn son. Now, if we put a kwe in there, Majiquis, it means the firstborn girl or daughter. How many of you are Majiquis in your family? You're firstborn. Anybody firstborn? Yeah? Okay, so, so you young men, you would have that title. Okay, which means you're the boss over all your other little siblings and you can <coughs> make them do whatever you want. Clean up after you, you know, that sort of thing. All that fun stuff. Any of you young ladies, are you firstborn in your family? No, no, no firstborn girls? Oh, you are? So your title, your title, you would be the Majiquis which means that everybody born after you has to listen to you because you're the boss, right? Even if they're boys, they still have to listen to you, right? No matter what, because you're the Majiquis. So Majiquis, the firstborn son, and had a twin brother. His name was Munso, okay? Munso, and, and Majiquis was purely physical, okay? While Munso was purely spiritual. And you know what? They, 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 they couldn't get along, those two. They were, they were, they were like the elements, that when, when the elements were first created. These two guys were fighting with each other all the time. Okay? They, they, they couldn't get along. They couldn't find a way to, to, to work together. So what happened is that Munso, the, the, the spirit, ended up killing the physical half, ended up killing Majiquis. And, and when Majiquis died, the spiritual half realized that it couldn't exist without the physical half. And, and so Munso, Munso didn't die, but faded away. Okay? Munso, you, 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 can't kill, you can't kill that kind of energy. It's, it's, it's impossible. It exists forever, right? Because, because it comes from the Creator. So when Munso faded away, Winona was alone again. And so... Epangishmuk visited her again, and they had another set of twins. And these twins were Nanabuju, or Nanabush. Some people refer to him as Nanabush. And Makwa. Anybody know who Makwa is? Any rec anybody recognize any of those words? Nanabuju or Makwa? What's, do you know? Bear, right. Okay. So, Makwa and Nanabuju. Nanabuju was uh, very emotional. He liked to play. He was a trickster, as they refer to him as. He liked to play jokes on people. He would, he would go around and he would, he would uh, in, in, in one of the stories that I was told is that the, the rabbit used to have these, these short little ears and, and short little feet. And, and what Nanabuju did was he went up to the rabbit one day and he stomped on his back feet and then grabbed them by the ears and stretched them up like this. Okay, so that's why the, the rabbit still has those long ears and, and those, those big back feet because that's, that's how Nanabujo had made him, okay? Uh, in, another, in another story, there's always stories about the rabbit and Nanabujo. Um, Nanabujo got mad at the rabbit. I don't know what the rabbit was doing, but, but Nanabujo got, got upset with the rabbit and then punched him in the face, punched him in the mouth, okay? Split his lip. And so whenever you see a rabbit, you'll see that little, that little hair lip, they call it, okay? Hair as in H-A-R-E, hair. Yeah, not, not hair. Okay. But you can Google that later, right? If you want to see images of, of the, 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 the face of a rabbit, you'll see you know, what Nana Bourgeois did to that rabbit and how, why it looks like that today. But Makwa, on the other hand, Makwa, on the other hand, was, was you know, like, like you ever see those Eastern monks, you know, those monk types that are always praying, they're constantly... They're constantly thinking about, about things. They're constantly seeking knowledge. Well, that was Makwa. Makwa was like that. 
So he'd be, he'd be out in the bush all day. Right? He'd be out in the bush all day talking to the plants, talking to the animals, learning about their, about their gifts, learning about their medicines. Okay? And, and because of that, Makwa soon became like a, like a great healer okay? because he had knowledge of all the plants and what their healing properties were and all the animals and the gifts that they could bring. Okay? And Makwa would often go around, or sorry, Nanabujo would often go around and he would tease the animals or he would change the plants and, and Makwa would have to follow along and, and clean up after him. Any of you guys ever have to clean up after, you know, an older brother or something or, you know, because, because you're, you're, you're kind of down at the bottom of the list here and, and you, you get stuck doing all the work because you're younger? Well, that's, that's, what, that's what Makwa had to do because Nanabujo would go in, he'd make a mess somewhere, and then Makwa would have to go in, he'd apologize, and he'd, he'd fix things. Okay? He'd try to make things right, put things back the way they were supposed to be. And the two of them didn't get along. Okay? They, were, they were fighting all the time as well. Okay? So finally, Makwa, Makwa said, Nanabujo, I've had it with you. I'm tired of fixing up your mistakes. I'm tired of cleaning up after you. I'm going to go talk to the Creator and I'm going to see if the Creator can change me to something else. And so Makwa went to the Creator, talked to the Creator and said, listen, I'm having a real problem with, with my brother and, and, you know, I just changed me into something else. I don't want to be associated with him anymore. So the Creator said, well, here, take this coat. Take this, take this fur coat. Um, put it on. But once you put it on, you, you, you have to be sure about your decision. Be absolutely sure about that decision that you're making because once you put this coat on, you can never change back. You can never go back. All right, once you've made that decision, it's final. And so Makwa took the jacket and he went around and he was thought about it, right? He's a, Makwa is a very deep thinker. Right? And he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he thought, okay, well, one last chance. Let, let, let's give Nanabojo one last chance. And so he went and found Nanabojo, and at first they started, they were getting along, you know, teasing each other and joking and stuff. And then it, it escalated okay, to a point where they started to fight. Okay, they were pushing and shoving each other, and they were almost fighting. And then Makwa realized at that point that, that they, they're never going to get along. Okay, and sometimes the best option is to walk away. And so that's what he did. He put the, he put the jacket on, and, and as he walked away, he said, Hey, Nanabujo, remember, remember, always remember we were brothers. We were once brothers. And then, and then he pulled the, the hood over his head, and then that transformed him into the bear, the bear as we recognize him today. So we have this kinship. The, the, the Nishnabek have this kinship with the bear. We recognize him as, as our brother, okay, still based on this, from, from the story, from the very early on in our civilization. We, we understand that connection, that connection is still there. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a, a bear after you've gone hunting. Anybody ever hunt bear at all? Nobody hunts, nobody hunts bear. Um, I'm bear clan, I, I, I wouldn't be allowed to hunt bear. But I've, I've seen, when I was growing up in Wiki, my neighbors hunted a bear. And, and when, when, they, when they skinned it, when they, when they pulled off that fur coat, it, lo it looked just like a human, just like a man underneath. Okay? Same kind of pinky skin, right? Uh, you, you would think that it was, there was a man wrapped in a fur coat. Okay? So those connections, those deep connections still remain with the bear. Okay? So Nanabujo, Nanabujo's... Um, not sad necessarily, but, but he, he thinks, wow, I've got the whole place to myself. Woohoo! Right? He's really happy. He's got the whole place to himself. He can do whatever he wants. Right? How, how would you guys, what would you guys do if, if you had your whole house to yourself all weekend? What's that? I get that all the time. You get that all the time, yeah? Yeah. Would you, would you guys throw a big party? Invite all your friends over, bring your own pop and chips, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, Nanabujo had the whole planet to himself, except for Winona. But he had the whole world to himself, and he would go around, 
And he would do all these things that he used to do to the plants. He'd beat up on a rabbit or, you know, all sorts of things. But then after a while, it, it, it became boring. Okay? He, it wasn't any fun for him anymore. Okay? And, and he realized that he was missing his brother, his brother Bear. And so one day he sat down and he said, Creator, what have I done? What have I done? I've, I've made a mistake. I need to please bring me home. And so what the Creator did was she, she turned him into a, a star and stuck him right at the, right at the end of the, the, the constellation referred to as the Big Dipper. When you guys go out tonight, if it's a clear night, look up in the sky, I think around this direction, and you'll see seven stars in the shape of a Big Dipper. That's, that's how we recognize it now, but in the old days it was called the Big Bear. Because okay, it, it's shaped like a big bear, those seven stars. And Nanabuj was right at the tip of the nose of the bear. Okay, that's, that's his star. That's, that's where he resides now. That's kind of like creator's sense of humor. Okay, you're, ne you're never going to be apart from your brother now because you're, you're here, you're right out front on the tip of the nose. So, at the end of the day, Winona, Winona got together with... Uh, with Epungishmuk, she had more children, okay? But instead of these children being just purely physical or emotional or spiritual or mental, um, they combined all four of those, all four of those elements, okay? And, and, and when, they, when these children were born, they were born whole. So they had a little bit of each. They had a little bit of the intellectual part. They had a little bit of the emotional part. They had the physical part and the spiritual part. Okay, just like when, when you're, you're being taught about the medicine wheel and how all it's made up of four equal parts, okay, well, that's, that's where it comes from. It comes from those four, those four boys, four, the, the Winona's first four sons who, who couldn't get along but slowly, slowly got to start to work together. All right, so when... When we're born, the belief, the belief, the original Anishinaabe belief about when we were born was that when, when we're born, we're born whole, we're born complete. Everything, everything you need in order to survive in, in this world, you're born with. You have, you have a, a, a body, you have a, a, a spirit, you have a, a mind, okay? you have emotions. And, and your journey through life is, is, about, is about learning to control, learning, learning to get along, learning to balance all of those things. Okay? So when we're born, we have everything we need. Okay? One more? I think one, one or two more. All right. Winona lived for a long, long time. She didn't have any bad habits. Okay? She didn't have fry bread, stuff like that. So she lived a long, long time, and she had, she had lots of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And when she died, her, her spirit, that spiritual component, ended up going back to the Creator. Okay, that, that's, and that's our belief. When, when, when we're done here, when we're done with our physical parts, we're going to move on to the, back to the Creator. And so, Anishinaabe, a nishin a be a a is the light. Nishin means good. A be means male. Because we're talking about her, when Winona's first four boys, they were all male. A nishin a be means we are the people, people of the good light, men of the good light. So when you greet each other and you say a nin, that's what you're doing. You're, 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 you're not saying hi or hello. Okay, that's, that's not what it means. It, it sort of means that. It's a greeting. But it actually means I see your light. I acknowledge that, that you are from the Creator. I acknowledge your, that you're divine. Okay? All these things, all these things in that word, Anishinaabe. So when you say that you're Anishinaabe, that's what you're, you're talking about. That you're a descendant of Winona. Okay, that you're whole, you're complete. Okay. Next. I think that's it. 
So again, all of these worlds, they, they, they lived according to the original instructions that they were given. So the, the, the world of the elements, they stuck to their instructions to provide for everything else that follows. The animals, the, or sorry, the plants were told to provide for growth and healing. The animals were told to provide for growth and teaching. And then the humans were told to respect, look after all things, and walk gently. Okay? And guess, guess who forgot their instructions? Can you guess? Any ideas? The humans. the humans, right? The humans forgot their instructions. And so we have to move. When you, when you think about the way things are in the world right now, we have to sort of do what we can to move back to those, those ways of thinking, those ways of living, walking gently, right? We, you you want to make sure, I want to make sure that, that my great, 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 great grandchildren have a nice place to live. Clean air, clean water, right? And I, you, probably, you guys probably want that stuff for your, your great, 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 great grandkids too, I would imagine, right? Okay, well, I hope so anyway, okay? 